The Mystery of Princess Talara, Part 3, by Mara Lyketh, Lyketh? Gnorbuth, Gnorbuth? Uh, was leaving his favorite pub in Camlorn, the Breaking Branch, when he heard someone calling his name. His was not the sort of name that could be mistaken for another. He turned and saw Lord Errol, the royal battle mage from the palace, emerge from the darkness of the alley. My lord, said Norbooth, with a pleasant smile. I'm surprised to see you out this evening, Norbooth, grinned Lord Errol, with a, pleasant, uh, with a most unpleasant smile. I've not seen you and your master very much since the millennial celebration, but I understand you'll, you've been very busy. What I've been wondering is what you've been busy doing. Protecting the Imperial interests in Camlorn is busy work, my lord, but I cannot imagine you would be interested in the minutia of the Ambassador's appointments. But I am, said the Battle Mage, especially as the Ambassador has begun acting most mysteriously, most undiplomatic undiplomatically lately. And I understand that he has taken one of the whores from the Flower Festival into his house. I believe her name is Gaina? Norbooth shrugged. He's in love, I would imagine, my lord. It can make men act very strangely, as I'm sure you've heard before. She is a most comely wench, laughed Lord Errol. Have you noticed how much she resembles the late Princess Talara? I have only been in Camlorn for fifteen years, my lord. I never saw her late majesty. Now I could understand it if he had taken to writing poetry, but that man in love spends his days in the kitchens of the palace, talking to old servants. That hardly sounds like molten passion to me, even based on my limited experience, Lord Errol rolled his eyes. And what is this business he is now in? Oh, what is the name of that village? Umbington, replied Norbooth, and immediately wished he hadn't. Lord Errol was too ca too canny an actor to reveal it, but Norbooth knew at the pit of his stomach that the battle mage did not even know Lord Strail had left the capital. He had to get away to let the ambassador know, but there was still a game to be carefully played. He's not leaving for there until tomorrow. I believe it's just to put a stamp on some deed that needs the imperial seal. Is that all? How tedious for the poor fellow. I suppose I'll see him when he returns, then, Lord Errol bowed. Thank you for being so informative. Farewell. The moment the royal battle mage turned the corner, Norbooth leapt onto his horse. He had drunk one or two ales too many, but he knew he must find his way to Umbrington, Umbington before Lord Errol's agents did. He galloped east out of the capital, hoping there were signs along the road. Seated in a tavern that smelled of mildew and sour beer, Lord Strail marveled at how the, Emper the Emperor's agent, Lady Brissena, Brissena uh, always found the most public of places for her most private of conferences. It was harvest time in Umbington, and all of the field hands were drinking away their meager wages in the noisiest of fashions. He was dressed appropriately for the venue, rough trousers and a simple peasant's vest, but he still felt conspicuous. In comparison to his two female companions, he certainly was. The woman on his, to his right was used to frequent, frequenting the low places of Dagger Fall as a common prostitute. Lady Brissina, to his left, was even more clearly in her, in her element. By what name would you prefer I call you, Lady Brissena? Asked Lady Brissena asked salaciously. I'm used to the name Gaina, though that may have to change. Was her reply. Of course it may not. Of course it may not. Gaina the whore may be the name writ in my writ on my grave. I will see to it that there is no attempt on your life like that flower festival. Lord Strail frowned. But without the Emperor's help, I won't be able to protect you forever. The only permanent solution is to capture those who would do you harm, and then to raise you to your proper station. Do you believe my story? Gaina turned to Lady Brissena. I've been the Emperor's chief agent in High Rock for many years now, and I have heard few stranger tales. 
If your friend the ambassador hadn't investigated and discovered what he has, I would have dismissed you outright as a madwoman, Brasenda laughed, forcing a smile onto Gaina's face to match. But now, yes, I do believe you. Perhaps that makes me the madwoman. Will you help us? asked Lord Strail simply. It is a tricky business inferring the affairs of the provincial kingdoms, or interfering in, sorry. Lady Brissenda looked into the depths of her mug thoughtfully. Unless there is a threat to the Empire itself, we find it best not to meddle. What we have in your case is a very messy assassination that happened 20 years ago and its aftermath. If His Imperial Majesty involved himself in every bloody hiccup in the succession in each of his thousand vassal kingdoms, he would never accomplish anything for the greater good of Tamriel. I understand, murmured Gaina. When I remembered everything, who I was and what happened to me, I resolved to do nothing about it. In fact, I was leaving Cam Lorn and going back home to Daggerfall when I saw Lord Strail again. He was the one who began this quest to, rev to resolve this, not me. And when he brought me back, I only wanted to see my cousin to tell her who I was, but he forbade me. It would have been too dangerous, growled Strail. We still don't know yet the depths of the conspiracy. Perhaps we never will. I'm sorry, I always find myself giving long explanations to short questions. When Lord Strail asked if I would help, I should have begun by saying yes. Lady Brissena laughed at the change in Lord Strail and Gaina's expressions. I will help you, of course, but for this to turn out well, you must accomplish two things to the Emperor's satisfaction. First, you must prove with absolute certainty who is the power behind this this plot you've uncovered. You must get someone to confess. And secondly, said Lord Strail, nodding, we must prove that this is a matter worthy of His Imperial Majesty's consideration, and not merely a minor local concern. Lord Strail, Lady Brissina, and the woman who called herself Gaina discussed how to accomplish their goals for a few hours more. When it was agreed that it had to be done, Lady Brissina took her leave to find her ally, Prosicus Strail. Uh, Prosicus Strail and Gaina set off to the west toward Cam Lorne. It was not long after beginning their ride through the woods that they heard the sound of galloping hoofbeats far up ahead. Lord Strail unsheathed the sword and signaled for Gaina to position her horse behind him. At that moment, they were attacked on all sides. It was an ambush. Eight men, armed with axes, had been lying in wait. Lord Strail quickly yanked Gaina from her horse, pulling her behind him. He made a brief, deft motion with his hands. A ring of flame materialized around them and rushed outward, striking their assailants. The men roared in pain and dropped to their knees. Lord Strail jumped the horse over the closest one and galloped at full speed westward. I thought you were an ambassador, not a mage, laughed Gaina. I still believe there are times for diplomacy, replied Lord Strail. The horse and rider they had heard before met them on the road. It was Norbooth. My lord, it's the royal battle mage. He found out you two were in Umbington. With considerable ease, I might add, Lord Earl's, Earl's voice boomed out of the woods. Norbooth, Gaina, and Lord Strail scanned the dark trees, but they showed nothing. The battle mage's voice seemed to emanate from everywhere and nowhere. I'm sorry, my lord, groaned Norbooth. I tried to warn you as soon as I could. In your next life, perhaps you'll remember not to trust your plans to a drunkard, laughed Lord Errol. He had them in his sight, and the spell was unleashed. Norbooth saw him first, by the light of the ball of fire that leapt from his fingertips. Later, Lord Errol was to wonder to himself what the fool had intended to do. Perhaps he was rushing forward to pull Lord Strail out of the path. Perhaps he was trying to flee the path of destruction, and simply left, simply moved left when he should have moved right. Perhaps, as unlikely as it seemed, he was willing to sacrifice himself to save his master. Whatever the reason, the result was the same. He got in the way. There was an explosion of energy that filled the night and an echoing boom that shook birds from the trees for a mile around. On the few square feet where Norbooth and his horse had stood was nothing but black glass. They had been reduced to less than vapor. 
Gaina and Lord Strail were thrown back. Their horse, when it recovered its senses, galloped away as fast as it could. In the lingering, glow in the lingering glowing aura of the spell's detonation, Lord Strail took, looked straight into the woods and into the wide eyes of the battle mage. Damn, said Lord Errol, and began, and began to run. The ambassador jumped to his feet and pursued. That was an expensive use of magicka, even for you, said Lord Strail as he ran. Don't you know well enough not to use ranged spells unless you're certain your target won't be blocked? I never thought, that idiot. Lord Errol was struck from behind and knocked to the wet floor, forest floor before he had a chance to finish his lamentation. It doesn't matter what you thought, said Lord Strail calmly, flipping the battle mage around and pinning his arms to the ground with his knees. I'm not a battle mage, but I knew enough not to use my entire reserve on your little ambush. Perhaps it's a matter of philosophy as a government agent. I feel inclined toward conservatism. What are you going to do? whimpered Lord Errol. Norbooth was a good man, one of the best, and so I'm going to hurt you quite a lot. The ambassador made a slight movement and his hands began to glow brightly. That's a certainty. How much more I'm going to hurt you after that depends on what you tell me. I want to hear about the former Duke of O... 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 I guess. What do you want to know? Lord Errol screamed. Let's start with everything, replied Lord Strail, with perfect patience.